Uh, okay, so a couple quotes here. Yeah, I kind of like the, like the way I like to do it. You know, a serious quote and then a goofy quote. Some order. Okay, stream ciphers, uh, a symmetric key cryptography. Again, there's two. Uh, so here we go into the modern world of uh, cryptography. Okay, so there's two different types of symmetric ciphers, uh, stream ciphers and block ciphers. Again, the stream ciphers, you can think of these as a generalization of the one-time pad. Now, what was good about the one-time pad? Secure. It doesn't get any more secure than that. Provably secure. What was bad about the one-time pad? The key is too big, right? I mean, the key is the same size as the message, and you have to agree on that in advance, all that stuff, right? So what we're going to do with the stream cipher is we're going to trade the provable security for practicality. Okay, that's really the trade-off. We're going to get a practical system, meaning the key is small, and we can encrypt lots of bits, but the trade-off is there's no way we can get that provable security that we had with the one-time pad. Okay. But we like this concept of the one-time pad. I mean, XOR to encrypt, what could be easier than that, right? XOR to decrypt, that's nice. Okay, so we can do that sort of process. Okay, so the idea is this. We're going to have a relatively short key. Okay, so we take the key, we put it into this algorithm, and we stretch it out into a long string of pseudo-random bits. We take that long string of pseudo-random bits that we call a key stream, and we XOR that to encrypt, and we XOR that again to decrypt. So we use the key stream just like the one-time pad. Okay. Uh, okay, so the block cipher, this is based on the code book. Now, um, it's easy to kind of lose sight of that when we start talking about the details of the algorithms, okay? But keep in the back of your mind that it's really just a code book. Okay, you're looking up one block of bits and substituting another block of bits. That's all it's going to <coughs> Now, it wouldn't be so useful if you had just a single code book, right? because eventually, no matter what you do, there's some sort of statistical attacks on codebook ciphers. Okay, you can always, you know, eventually figure out what this string of bits of ciphertext corresponds to in the plain text. Okay, it may take a lot of data, it may take a long time to do, but eventually, in principle, you can do that. Okay, so just having a single codebook is not a good thing. The deal with a block cipher is, you don't just have a single codebook. In fact, you've got a huge number of code books that are essentially indexed by the key. So if you plug in a key, that gives you a code book. Change the key, you've got a new code book. Okay, that's the idea. Uh, the code books actually use both confusion and diffusion, at least within a block. We'll see that. Uh, stream cipher is kind of a confusion only thing, just much like the one time pad. Uh, stream ciphers. That's my backyard right here. <laughs> no, it's not, actually. I mean, I do live in the mountains. It looks kind of like that, but it's not quite that nice. In my neighborhood, that bridge there would be falling down in the river or something. Okay, so, uh, okay, so stream ciphers, uh, these guys, not that long ago, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, stream ciphers were the thing. Okay, they were the most popular form of encryption from, say, World <coughs> War II until the 70s. Okay. Um, at least. Today it's not true. The, today it's definitely block ciphers. Those are the main, uh, uh, most used uh, cipher systems out there. Uh, so we won't spend a lot of time talking about uh, stream ciphers, but these two are, are ones that we'll see again. Okay, A51 is a cipher that's used in the GSM cell phones. Okay, so I mentioned before, you know, with Kirchhoff's principle, you know, you don't want to, you want to find the flaws before you build it into millions of cell phones. This is what I was thinking of. <laughs> so it's not the, not the greatest cipher, but it is uh, representative of uh, sort of the classic way to build uh, stream ciphers. They were based on ship registers, they were meant to be built in hardware, all that sort of stuff. Okay, RC4 on the other hand. Uh, this one uses a lookup table. It's meant to be built in software. It's very, it's very atypical for uh, stream cipher. I can't think of another one that's even similar to, to RC4. 
This one's used a lot. Okay, this is certainly the most widely used uh, screen cipher today. It's all over the place. And we'll mention a few, a uh, few places. It gets used. Uh, okay, so first of all, A51. Uh, this thing uses three shift registers. So okay, so for A51, think hardware class. Think you're sitting in your hardware class. Okay, we're trying to build something in hardware. That's really what's going on here. So we're going to have these three shift registers, uh, X, Y, and Z, uh, 19, 22, and 23 bits respectively, um, and we'll number the bits from left to right, starting with zero. So, how many bits is that total? 52, 64. 64, okay. Power of two, you know, we're computer scientists, we love powers of two, it's gotta be 64. Okay, so we've got these 64 bits. What's, what's really gonna go on is this. Here's the way it's gonna work. We'll put, we'll, we'll have a key that's 64 bits. Okay, so the key is 64 bits. We'll load the 64 bits into these three registers. Then we'll do some process that allows us to generate as many bits as we want, and we'll use those bits as the key stream to XOR with the plain text to encrypt, with the ciphertext to decrypt. That's the idea. Okay. Well, it looks bad. <laughs> it gets better on the next slide. <laughs> So, okay, so I wanted to find this function, this uh, majority vote function. So all it's going to do, it's going to take three bits, okay? And it's going to tell you what is the majority, either zeros or ones. Since, there, <coughs> since there's three, it can't be a tie. It has to be more zeros or more ones. So, for example, majority of these three guys is zero. Majority of those three is a one. This is kind of the formal definition of how everything works. Let's look at the picture. <laughs> I like the picture much better. Okay, so we have these three shift registers again. And we load those guys with the, with the key. Those 64 bits of key go in there. Okay, now how do I generate bits when I actually want to start encrypting stuff? Okay, well, this is the process. You look at these three special <coughs> positions, position eight in this register, 10 here, and 11 here. You take the majority of those three bits, whatever happens to be there, okay? Either zero or one. Now you go back and you say, hey, is this guy in the majority? If he is, then this register steps. And I'll tell you what that means in a minute. And then you look at this guy. Is he in the majority? If so, this register steps. If not, don't do anything, just leave it alone. Okay, same for this guy. See in the majority? If so, it steps. Otherwise, just leave it alone. Okay, what does it mean to step? Well, okay, suppose we're looking at this guy. This guy happens to be in the majority, so what we do to step is we take the bits coming out of those four positions. What does the plus mean? XOR. We XOR those four guys together, then we ship everything over one and put that new bit into that position. Okay, that's the shift, or step, step. step. Right. Okay, so that's step. So we step this guy if he needs to step, then we step this guy if he needs to step this guy. So you go through all that, first get the majority, then do the stepping. Finally, now we're finally ready to get a bit that we can use to encrypt. <laughs> then you look at the three bits that happen to be in these positions and XOR those three guys together, and that's the key stream bit. Got that? All that work to get one bit of key stream. But the beauty is, you can do it again. And again and again and again. You can do it as many times as you like and you can generate a key stream of any size, any practical size that you want. Okay, got that? Generate a single bit, but then just do it again. You know, like rinse, repeat, that sort of thing. Okay, so let's look at an example with actual numbers in here. Suppose you fill up the registers with the uh, key, and suppose those are the bits that happen to go in there. Now we look at the bits in these special positions. Okay, what's the majority? One. There's more ones than zeros. That's all it says. So which registers are going to step here? 
x and z. This one we're just going to leave alone. Okay, so this guy steps. So what does that mean? How do we step? We XOR these four bits together, which gives us a zero. Okay, gives us a zero. We shift everything over one position and put a zero into this position. How about down here? What do we do? Well, this guy steps, right? Because he's in the majority. Okay, we leave him alone. We take these four bits, which also happen to give us a zero when we XOR them. Shift everything over, put a zero into this position. Now, Now take the three bits that happen to be sitting at the ends here and XOR those guys together and you're done. You got the bit. What's at the end? Well, we shifted this guy over so there's a zero. We shifted this guy over so now there's a zero. And then there's a one. What does that give us? What does that give us? It's only two choices. Yeah, I like one. Okay, so we'll take one. <laughs> okay, so you get a single key stream bit of one for all that work. <laughs> but you could do it again. Okay, and notice these things have shifted, right? So you're changing the bits that determine, you know, which ones step and which ones don't. Alright. Uh, okay, so it seems kind of tedious, it seems like a lot of work to get a single bit. But if you built this thing in hardware, this thing can actually produce bits basically one bit per clock tick. I mean, it can produce bits really, really fast, okay? As fast as your processor can go. On the other hand, if you do this in software, it's not so impressive. Uh, okay, so, okay, so I've said this before, you know, that uh, crypto, you know, ship register crypto was popular in the past, but not today. Why was that? Why would people use something like this? Why would you use something that you could build in hardware as opposed to just writing it in software? Isn't that foolish? It seems like this is the kind of hardware you could use without having an entire computer or something that's much more focused on something like that. Okay, so in a sense you could build some really small special purpose thing that just does encryption, doesn't cost you very much, and it's pretty fast, right? Okay, that's, that's a good thought, even today to do something like that. But in the past, okay, go back a few years, uh, you know, what do you want to encrypt? Let's suppose you want to encrypt uh, telephone calls. Okay, telephone, you know, voice is like, you know, 64,000 bits per second, let's say. That's not very much, right? I can write a little code and I can encrypt millions of bits per second. That's no problem. But it was a problem not that long ago, <laughs> okay? Processor speeds were very slow, encrypting 64,000 bits per second was just not practical unless you built a special hardware device, device to do it. You just could not get that sort of horsepower using software. And that's really why you know, these things were uh, popular in the past. Now it's not an issue for most things. You have you know, powerful enough processors that you can do things in software, and even though it's not quite as efficient, it doesn't matter. You can still, uh, you know, uh, not have not worry about that. Okay, so anyway, these kind of shift register things, they were the most popular for a long time. Not so today. 